Hello, welcome back to this edition of Fun Facts. Today we're going to be dabbling a little bit in the fairy tale territory. Now, a lot of these fairy tales were literally just made up to scare children, which, you know, sure, if you don't want them to doing things, that's one way. But the Pied Piper was one made up to mark an event that would be scarring in the history of Hamelin. No, the Pied Piper was a very strange story. I'm sure some of you may heard it. There's definitely some rats involved, maybe some children, and a flute. We're going to get down to some details here because this is Fun Facts. Okay, so quick side note here. We don't know what actual instrument the Pied Piper was playing. Um, obviously, it was a woodwind, some type of flute, maybe like a present-day recorder. Um, I'm assuming it went something like this. <laughs> In a world with facts that are possibly entertaining, we bring you today's episode of Fun Facts. Eighty years before the plague, back in 1284 in Hamlin, there was a huge rat epidemic, not only causing disease and pestilence, but people were actually getting attacked by rats as well. The rat problem's getting so bad that last Wednesday you woke up with a rat holding a knife to your throat, demanding money. Now you're broken, penniless, and not only that, they pooped in your coffee and you didn't notice until you started drinking some. To make it even worse, they ate your only cookie and they stole your dog. So you make your way down to the mayor's office to demand what's going on. This rat problem is out of hand and it needs a solution. Now this just wasn't the basic rat problem. I mean, they weren't holding knives to people's throats, but it was an issue. Nobody knew how to take care of it, and the best thing the mayor could do is actually just offer a thousand gold coins to anyone who could take care of it. Also rumored that that was actually 10,000 coins or just a bag of gold coins. Uh, nobody actually knows because uh, you'll find out in a minute. No worries, my daft peasant. I already have a solution. I'm offering a thousand gold coins to anyone who can take care of this problem. Do, do you... Do you know how? Anybody? Your friends? Family? Check check with them. Thank you. Okay. Now the Pied Piper catches word of this deal, so he heads to the town of Hamlin. The word Pied actually means multicolored as well. Now the Piper and the Mayor meet, and they agree to this deal, a thousand gold coins to get rid of the rat problem. The Piper goes out in the streets and immediately starts playing his pipe. The tune he plays is so funky all the rats can't help but follow him all the way out of town, except apparently one deaf one, but I guess it doesn't mean much because it doesn't come back up in the story later again. It was a pleasure doing business with you, Mayor. I'll get to work right away. Okay, so another really weird side note here. Um, I looked up how rats respond to music, and they don't dance or do any of that stuff. I'm not sure if they would actually follow you, but it does help reduce stress, anxiety, it helps increase social interaction, and it does increase their life expectancy as well. So, yeah. Staying true to the story, he actually led all the rats to the river, and I guess that tune was just so funky they didn't notice they were going into the water, and they all ended up drowning. Uh, now, this whole part with the rats and everything and the piper coming to town for them uh, was actually added around 1384, so I'm not really sure if that part was true. There definitely was a rat epidemic, though. Now, the Pied Piper being all done with his job, he heads back to town for the payment, only to find all the gates locked and he's not allowed entry. The mirror at the top of the gate yells, that looked too easy. I'm not paying you. All done like you ask, sir. Where's my thousand gold coin? Uh, yeah, how about no? That looked way too easy. You can't just magically play a tune that rats follow. That's some bullcrap, right? I'm not paying you. That's it. Oh, is that how it's going to be? Um, I think I'm going to take your kids if you don't. Yeah, how about that? Just going to bust out some kids, Bob. We'll see what happens, huh? Wait! No, Cindy! Where are you going? Come back! Side note, in a couple versions of the story, different things happen. Um, in one story, there's a blind and deaf kid who don't end up making it because one can't hear the sound and the other can't see where they're going, so they don't end up following the kids. Uh, another version of the story has a crippled child who can't keep up with them as well as the blind and deaf kid. And then the last version, uh, there's actually a babysitter who holds on to one of the kids so he doesn't end up going. But she follows the group, finds out where they go, and then tells the adults. So that's how they found out. So the Pied Piper led 130 kids away from the town of Hamlet, apparently into a cave, and they were never found again. And that's how the fairy tale goes. Now, like I said before, that rat part was added in 1384. So the original story was just the Pied Piper led away a bunch of kids and there wasn't a reason for it before. But there is evidence in the town showing that 130 kids left the town of Hamlin in 1284. And there's references to the Pied Piper as well. 
Some say he showed up in his green outfit with a red hat, and others say he showed up in his Pied Piper outfit with all the multicolors and everything. But no one put down enough notes for us to ever know. So the unanswered question is, you know, did this even happen? Like, what, what took the kids? Now, there's a couple of theories, and we'll walk through quite a few of them. One of the theories, this is actually just a message for all the kids immigrating to another town, and the reason behind that was kind of the way they set up their wills. Um, the oldest kid would get everything, and then all the other kids would become their, like, peasants and slaves and have to work the farm for them. Um, that would definitely be a reason I would leave, so I understand that theory. A bit darker of a theory is that they were sold to a recruiter from the Baltics to help settle new lands. Now 130 kids, I'm not sure how much that would do, but I'm assuming that they were going along the way, picking up people as they went. Even though that sounds a little bit darker, it's probably more possible because the practice of selling off illegitimate children as slaves and things back then was definitely a practice or something that they did. And the nearby area of Transylvania does show a lot of names from the town of Hamlin um, being moved over there, so that's a definite possibility. The last theory is a little bit closer to the fairy tale. It follows that storyline a little bit more, where um, a heretic or someone who believed in a different religion led about 130 kids away, and they actually ended up passing away in some unfortunate event um, not meant to happen, like drowning a river they were trying to cross, or even a landslide in the mountains that they were going into. So that wraps up today's fun facts. And if you enjoyed the fairy tale and want to hear more, just go ahead and type a suggestion in the comments down below, and we'll see you on the next one.